here. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the quarterback document. Now, I got to be honest with you, I'm only two episodes in. And one of the reasons I'm only two, two episodes in, and I, I decided sort of, um, you know, to, um, I, I decided, uh, you know, just a, uh, you know, yesterday on a whim to watch it. A, because the, the CFL game I was watching, you know, Hamilton ended up having a huge lead. It wasn't compelling. So I started watching it. But the other reason is, you know, as a Kansas City fan, um, and as somebody who grew up in Minnesota, watching the Vikings still pay a lot of attention to it. Some of my best friends are Vikings fans. Like, I, I felt like I already knew a decent amount about Kirk Cousins and Patrick Mahomes. Um, but I, I I was taken I was taken aback by a few things. I think the first one is Mahomes really is a psycho. I think that he has that sort of like crazy demeanor that that Michael Jordan gonna he's going to be offended slash motivated by the littlest of things uh to the point where you know I I think that um I, I think that his his standing as the league's best quarterback is going to be unequivocal for a while and that's just because you you watch the one episode where they talk about his torque and how he how much he trains to be able to make those throws it's funny because when I watch it, it looks so natural, but it's very clear that a lot of work goes into Patrick Mahomes and, you know, sort of how he can sort of rig the league um, by being so great with arm angles and movement and all that. And it's very clearly something that he works at and he understands is his edge uh, physically, in addition to the clear edge he has mentally, which is that he just wants to be the best. And, uh, you know, he is satisfied with nothing else. Uh, so that was like, and you sort of knew that about Mahomes. I mean, the fact that, you know, he did what he did when he was injured the way he was in the playoffs in the Super Bowl, uh, you know, it's really, a, I think, a harbinger of, you know, what's to come for him. Um, but it was it was fun to see that in the documentary. And then, you know, Cousins has, has been a quarterback who I've been very critical of in the past. Um, I did not like his first contract. I did not like his second contract. I think his current contract's fine. I think, honestly, given... All the decisions Quasi has made, I think some of them are questionable. But given that all of them that they have made, I think it's probably the right move for them to extend him now because they clearly didn't want Will Levis for whatever reason. They didn't want uh, last season, you know, Pickett or Willis, possibly for good reasons. But given all the decisions they've made at the position, like Cousins is probably their best option for the next two years. And and I've been critical of him for a lot of reasons, and I think that this humanizes him a little bit. Um, it it makes it shows kind of very explicitly some of the uh insecurities that he has uh he made a quote by margaret thatcher which i thought was funny uh and, and we do know that you know kind of some of his you know we know his background a little bit on that but um what i what i really thought was cool was kevin o'connell and kevin o'connell very clearly understood what his assignment was and and i think it's good to it, it's good that he came into that position in minnesota first time head coach Knowing where his predecessor failed, Mike Zimmer was a head coach in Minnesota that in 2015 won a division, 2017 won a division, went to the NFC title game on the back of his defense for in large part. In 2015, Teddy Bridgewater was just kind of an okay quarterback, um, you know, was ascending certainly. And then in 2017 was Case Keenum, very like the backup of backup quarterbacks. And that defense was, you know, carried them basically – all those seasons. And I think it, it was not, I mean, Ray Charles could see that he didn't want Kirk cousins uh, on that team. And, you know, even though cousins, I think has performed admirably at times and, you know, probably didn't live up to his contract, but probably lived up to a description of a pretty good quarterback. Mike Zimmer was, was always in some ways trying to prove that prediction. Right. And I think with a quarterback like cousins, very clearly has these insecurities. I don't know if they came from, from working for Zimmer or they were something that Zimmer had a heart. They were existing before and Zimmer didn't play into. Kevin O'Connell very much played into him. And there was this, there was a scene where they go to Washington, obviously where Kirk started his career, um, you know, kind of from a fourth round pick over to RG3, uh, had a really torrid finish to 2015, kind of an okay a very good 16 and then like just an okay 17. That's why they let him go and trade it for Alex Smith. But they go there 
and they only score 20 points. They're down 17-7. It's not a great day for the offense and not a great, great day for Kirk Cousins. And yet Kirk makes a couple plays. They go ahead and win. And in the locker room after, Kevin O'Connell said, the only reason we're 6-1, and one, the only reason we are where we are is because of our quarterback. And while I'm watching, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, well, that's not true. Like that Justin Jefferson's the best non-quarterback in all of football. Um, the defense had created turnovers. I think Harrison Smith had a long interception return in that game. They got some pressure, all this stuff. Offense line, you know, Dalvin Cook made a one-handed catch for a touchdown on a ball thrown by Cousins. Like they're very clearly, and I think Mike Zimmer would have said that. I think Mike Zimmer would have said, look, like it was a great team effort. We won despite of he what he might not have said that explicitly, but I think he would have given off those vibes. And yet Kevin O'Connell knew like, no, this was a situation he goes back to his old team. They win a tough game. He was a tough son of a bitch in that game. He took a lot of hits, a lot of pressure, and he he encouraged him. Now, that's probably not enough to win a Super Bowl with him, but it's probably enough to, you know, win 13 games when you otherwise would win nine or something like that. So I really, I really came out of that, uh, you know, watching the first couple episodes there, and obviously I'll finish at some point soon. I came out of watching the first few episodes of that show thinking to myself, like Kevin O'Connell really understood the assignment of being a head coach with a quarterback who's pretty good but limited. And um, but the contrast could not have been bigger between Cousins and 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 Mahomes. And I think like if you're a Vikings fan, and we'll talk about the NFC North coming up in a second here, uh, before we get to our ad read here. Um, I think if you're a Vikings fan, you realize by watching that show and watching kind of where Mahomes is as a player and where, you know, the, the fact that the distance between him and any other guy, let alone your guy, is so big, it's going to take a lot for you to win a Super Bowl. I do think that Kevin O'Connell is going to give the Minnesota Vikings, with Kirk Cousins, as long as that happens, as good of a chance as they have. Whereas I thought maybe Mike Zimmer, especially when that roster was better around Cousins, since 2018, 2019, I think, like, he was a net negative on the margins relative to the quarterback and the limitations uh they're up so it was a it was kind of an interesting you know in my opinion a very interesting um you know a, a very interesting look into um the, the the sort of what it takes to be a quarterback and what it takes to i think more importantly coach a quarterback who is not perfect which is all but one guy in the league frankly uh and to various degrees so 